Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wishing you a very happy and healthy start to your uh, to the first day of June, actually, the monthly that we've all been waiting for, as there's plenty to talk about now on the higher term timeframes. And I want to follow up from yesterday's uh, short term timeframe analysis as well. There's plenty to speak about as we did hit the short term target to the downside. Now coming back into normality. And what does that mean for the coming trading week? Well, plenty to discuss there, actually, as well in uh, tra uh, traditional markets, too. Um, on top of that, I should say that I will very likely be on Twitch later today. I uh, just need to get through a few of the daily grind era, uh, errands, I think, is the right is the right terminology, and uh, and they could probably boot up a stream sometime around two or three my time, I'd imagine, uh, depending upon how things go. And, and of course, anyone's invited. For anyone who happens to also uh, be interested in strategy games or Total War in general, definitely check out my new gaming channel. I have a link in the comment section below. Uh, you'll never ask me to uh, for for people to like and subscribe here on this channel, but on that channel, actually would actually would not mind if that were if that was the case. But it's all good, of course, unless if you're like, you know, interested in such things, then don't bother yourself with it. So all good. Anyways, uh, let's go put the interest on the on the uh, on the good old uh, crown trading application right here, which has been massively updated um, over this past weekend. So uh, so if you're unfamiliar with the updates or if you're looking at some over here that looks a little bit new, uh, I covered it uh, in depth in the prior video yesterday that I uploaded. But for right now. Um, the open interest is still of very much interest, mostly because this is all a new read as we did make it so that all major exchanges, all major derivative exchanges are included in this read right now. And it's only documenting on this read uh, on this read right here, the perps for those exchanges. And if you actually click on the uh, on the open interest read itself, you'll come up with a chart right here. It's still, you know, under construction, I suppose, as uh, we're still gathering data. We are doing this all by ourselves, essentially. And that means that it's just a matter of time before this, you know, f well, just a matter of time before we have, you know, a verifiable history of, of open interest to look at and to analyze. But that also means that it's going to take some time because this is completely new. And what I can tell you from actually like doing our own research into this is that a lot of the exchanges and a lot of the websites that we've you know tried to use in the past there's some very interesting and perhaps even diabolical things going on with them which i would which makes me think that uh it's very difficult to trust a lot of the uh information in this space so i really wanted to make sure that we have our own legitimate source which we are working on right now and it's well it's in front of your very eyes on top of that we do have this new data tab over here which is going to show all sorts of different charts for all sorts of different metrics on this market again same sort of thing here too we need just more time to really uh transpire in order for in order for this to become you know more and more uh well usable i suppose but for right now it is it is of interest as we do kind of watch the initial phases of it and we'll be adding a lot more to it as well and we're also always looking for suggestions too so if you do have something that you'd like really like to see um you know it's 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 in our interest to actually well to to hear that out because well at the end of the day we're making this for ourselves in the community and we want to use it, you know, we want to use it. I mean, we pay, you know, we pay quite a bit of monthly fee for it. So we want to make sure that it is the best possible. And this is something that, you know, I've really wanted for myself and to share it with the community is uh, is a pleasure, especially when we can come up with something better overall. Anyways, on top of that, uh, looking at the Bitcoin dominance steady, looking at the fear and greed index, completely neutral, which is interesting here because Bitcoin is knocking on the higher term time frame resolution to the upside and technically to the downside as well. I mean, we're looking at a big resolution relatively soon, but with the last two to three months of price action in mind with Bitcoin going up more than 2x from the lows at about 4,400 on a closing basis, it is interesting to see the market is not greedy right now. It is actually technically neutral. And this has been the one big indicator that has actually been um, suggesting that Bitcoin has been climbing the wall of worry, uh, which I think is a lot easier seen on like uh, traditional markets with NASDAQ, which we'll look at it as, as well. But with all of that said, let's get into the actual um, charts themselves right in over here bitcoin on the weekly pretty damn good weekly closure as we do maintain all major moving averages we are going to see the red 10 symbol cross the upside of both the uh 55 and the 21 right here probably confirmed at the end of this week unless if you consider this already which technically it is a couple bucks above but i'd really want to see another closure anyways more importantly you intuitively know that lower periods above higher periods generally good telling you that bots and algos are on the buy side of this market as bitcoin consolidates at a major 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 level to the upside not only that but the monthly did get a chance to close very 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 nice i really like this read right here i do not think or sorry um i i would not also or <laughs> i'm trying to get my thoughts out properly okay so first and foremost i really like the close second and foremost 
which is second most, <laughs> I would say, I actually do think that it's possible to still come back down to that 8,600 decretion, but I would look at that as an opportunity. Closing where Bitcoin did yesterday at 9,450-ish region was a close above the last prior swing little high right here before that before that massive rejection down from 10,000 down to 4,400-ish region and you know a wick lower depending upon which exchange that you're looking at. But the way that it's kind of shaping up right here, things are looking good for the macro actually. But still, the areas that we've been looking at and documenting are more or less the same. I don't want to get ahead of myself here and I really don't want to be misheard as like Crown being super bullish. At the end of the day, this is coming from the perspective of the trader and I need to see a couple things still happen before I get too excited with this. But the setup is there. I still need to see a daily close or a 12 hour close either above 9,800 or a four hour above 10,000. One of those two things would, uh, or sorry, one of those three things would do it for me in order to look for at the very least a move back up to 10.5 very likely a short-term pullback there and then probably extension to 11.5 that's where the macro comes in as long as bitcoin's below 11.5 well can't get too like gung-ho bullish to fucking 100,000 200,000 quadrillion billion whatever it might end up being anyways looking at this right here momentum also just looking more or less healthy we are going to see the monthly stokes cross the upside more importantly reject the bearish control zone as well which is just which is uh which says a lot about price action monthly jewel it continues to bounce off the slower oscillator there which does suggest that the momentum is to the upside it's more of a hodl your long signal than anything right there but because this is you know you can see right here that it really hasn't had that much history to really even populate itself it doesn't make all that much sense to put that much weight on it but i would say it's an overall good thing we can maybe look at the triple weekly to um to uh, to kind of cut that a little bit more uh down and still get one of those higher term time frame accurate reads looking at the monthly rsi it is officially confirmed above the exponential as well as we said was likely the other day or this past month really and uh and things are looking more or less rosy here like o'donnell anyways uh more, more importantly or maybe not more importantly but just as important i want to look at the uh net delta indicator right in over here which we check out you know a uh, couple times every month and i want to see if the slope has officially changed and oh yeah oh fucking yeah baby oh fucking yeah and what do you know we do have a trend line forming right here uh, or it's, I mean, it's, well, it's already there. I would consider this a third test on it. And we do have a positive slope on this. And I only give a fuck about slope analysis on the accumulation distribution indicator ever, ever, ever. It has gotten the phase changes for the macro incredibly well on Bitcoin since the inception, telling you to basically get short on Bitcoin on this bull trap right here, get long on Bitcoin on this bear trap right here, get short on Bitcoin on this bull trap right here, all throughout 2018 essentially, and then even called the 2019 low at uh, 3,100 as well. And then more and then more recently called the top at uh, 10 five right here actually about a month before and then once again we are switching up the slope after hitting this trend line which is a trend line that has been um uh what's what's where i'm looking for uh protecting the last few lows going all the way back to july 2015 connected with the 3100 low in january 2019 and then more recently in may 2020 after that uh, dumped to 4400 ish region so i do look at this as overall good the setup is looking you know nice and healthy and i do think that bitcoin very likely does fall through here and if I had to put my money on it, that's what I'd be saying. But, you know, again, as a trader, does that mean that I just blindly go long here? No, I actually do think that uh, just based off the monthly, Bitcoin could very easily come back down and fill last month's uh, open down to about 8650-ish region, which I would look at as a massive opportunity. Um, but below 8600, I'd still get bearish again, of course. It's just I don't really think that that's what's happening here. Of course, weirder things have happened in the history of, of things or in the history of things, but in the history of trading Bitcoin. But, uh, but, but, uh, but I like that for a nice pivot uh long term historically speaking very 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 good and uh and i really have no reason to be bearish as long as we are above 8600 from a from from a higher time frame view doesn't mean that we can't go down in the short term time frames in fact it is looking a little bit frothy in the short term uh time frames here even though well technically speaking we are still putting uh putting in an uptrend higher highs and higher lows as it is right now um but the same area that we spoke about over this weekend is still very much relevant anywhere below 9300 um especially on a two-hour closure or even just ticking below the last spike low of this which is actually a few bucks higher than that at 9324 i think yeah 9323 actually on mexico then i would look for an extension all the way back down to the bottom side of the range test this trend line that's been holding bitcoin up for the past uh, month or so since since early may and uh, fill you know and, and backfill down to last month's open somewhere down around like 87 to 8800 ish region and i would be looking for a bounce and like i said i would look for look at that as a, as likely a um uh, as as likely potentially a long-term opportunity uh now 
now if Bitcoin does break that area to the down, so the same the same logic applies as last month. I, I would still look for at the very least to move back down to 8100, probably a small bounce there, and then continuation to 7500 with potential bottoming action in 7500 or maybe even 7000. Um, however, I, I I actually do not think that that's what's happening here. Again, my opinion is wrong. All the fucking time on price action. That's why I use TA to keep myself honest and out of fucking trouble. Um, so uh, so as it is right now, the short term time frames are really you know really 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 tightened up here so i am skeptical to think that bitcoin just fucking you know gives the boo laws their <laughs> their girthy green dildos uh, as they wish you know straight off the bat with no pressure to the downside first um so i actually do think that it's it's more or less likely that bitcoin probably comes back down and fills uh, somewhere in the lower 9000s um but again that's only i i really only switch on to that as uh, as soon as bitcoin goes below 9300 uh in the current range that we're in right now it's it's more of the fuckboy range still so to speak as you know i am overall bullish on bitcoin but but does it have the momentum to uh, well to to blast through the relevant levels to the upside at 9,800 on a higher time time frame close? Well, I would you know looking at momentum also just right here, it actually does look like things have actually come down quite a bit. Four hour stokes are a little bit humbling uh, for what I just said because that's that's actually cooling off quite a bit here, and we'll be testing the edge of the bearish control zone. I mean, on this next tick. And I would, you know, if Bulas want to come back up and uh, continue the uptrend from there, that's where they likely defend. So looking okay, potentially, let's see what price would be needed to get to remain or sorry, to flip back the momentum uh, for the four hour back up to the upside. It would, it would be back above 9,600. Shout out to Bali for this one, really becoming more and more of, of a bigger part of my analysis each and every day. It's fucking amazing, actually. Uh, going over the three hour, same thing, 9550 actually, so a little bit less. Uh, would flip the short-term momentum back up to the upside. You can see that three-hour Stokes getting all the way down here. I don't see any trend lines to be aware of just yet, or maybe one like very far down here. In fact, not sure how relevant this one's going to be, um, as that would be right around the critical zone anyway. So it's you know kind of be expected anyways. Uh, but good confluence, I suppose. And of course, going down to the two-hour, what do we see here as well? We see the same. Or actually, no, not the same sort of thing. It is popping back up, and it's popping back up. After hitting this trend line, which has been kind of holding up our last few lows from this uh, from this short term consolidation, and you can see that momentum will remain to the upside as long as we are above essentially the last higher low that Bitcoin put in right around 9450 ish region. Um, on top of that, going down to the hourly and just seeing what the what the full picture is, more or less the same as the two hour uh, 9472 is that is the magical number to remain the short term momentum to the upside for this for this time frame. And again, you know both those time frames essentially showing that as long as Bitcoin remains in this higher low posture and for the short term time frames, the pressure is still there uh, for for uh, for a move to the upside. Again, this the relevant levels still 9800 on a on at the very least a 12 hour closure, preferably a daily. But both of those probably get it on a four hour. Um, I wouldn't feel as confident with 9800 with a four hour. I'd really be looking for a four hour closure a, a, above 10,000 looks ex extremely good uh, for resolution. Even above 9900 might do it for the more aggressive traders out there. I am I do not consider myself of that of that nature. But uh, but um, but you know, with good risk management can certainly make it work. And of course, that's a personal thing. Um, not to say that my way is the only way of doing it. It's just I find that erring on the side of caution has kept me safe in my trading career a lot more and keeping and keeping safe and, and protecting capital is honestly probably one of the most <laughs> one of the most important factors um, uh, with 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 actually like trading as a living. Anyways, um, looking at the hourly right or sorry, looking at the four hour right here, we do see that historic volatility percentile is in a good place to expand. We've seen a contraction phase pretty much go on for the whole last month of May, starting off uh, on that on that on that move from May 10th. You can see that this is really coming to a culminating event um, around later this week. I mean, it can really, really, realistically, it's very likely to break somewhere around here, statistically speaking, which would be about a week from today, a little bit more, actually. Um, and that probably speaks to the greater formation, whereas it is looking like it does want to expand in the short term as well. Um, but I wouldn't look for that expansion phase to be anything too crazy. Just kind of like test one of the uh, higher term time frame sides of the range, whether it be 9,800 to the upside or, uh, or, or about 86, 8,700 to the downside now that is rising, technically speaking. Um, I wouldn't really be looking for that expansion to be held as long as this trend line right here is still kind of holding in the regression from the last few spikes. It's, it looks to be still uh, contracting over the whole. So I think that you know it's still setting up. And, and keep in mind that if you are looking at this as a symmetrical triangle, which 
which I do believe that it is, it would have an apex actually all the way in basically end of June, suggesting a resolution point somewhere right around here uh, in about a week, actually. So um, so I think that both of those things line up with each other with particular importance on the historic volatility percentile. I'm curious if the hourly shows anything as well. It gets the short term moves incredibly well. And we do see that it is mm, it's getting there. But I really want to see it in single digits before I say the likelihood of a short term move uh, is 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 very high. Of course, uh, HVP very useful for things like that. But I need to be careful with the way that I relate those concepts because it's it's people think of it as like a timing indicator. It's not a timing indicator. It's a, it's more or less a probability or a statistical indicator saying that, you know, we're in kind of like an outlier of, of like a low volatility time uh, period within the trading asset. So that's, you know, not the same thing, but it, but it gets interpreted as, as the same thing. You know, there's no real way to like nail down the exact timing of when a formation is going to break, just more, more or less likelihoods um, and probabilities on top of that, which we'll look at later. I do also do want to follow up on the weekly as well, because we do have uh, CME's new weekly here too. And, you know, just, just looking at dildo bars, we do see that it's more or less constructive here. I really like the bifurcation between the 21 and the 55. Again, same thing with the 10 symbol crawling above all of them as well showing that the momentum is being brought up to the upside and bots and algos are very likely on the buy side. This is mediating, of course, the daily, the 12 hour uh, daily and two day cross with all, which all look healthy. I mean, this looks very textbook right here, you know, gets a golden cross, come back down and test it backs fills. And then, and then constructively works its way back above all major moving averages better even seen on the, on the daily, which of course, higher time frame is going to be better and 10 simple moving back above the 21. I like that. And then two day looks the best out of all of them getting the fresh cross right here, tested a few dildos later, and then held up above the 21 and 200 right here, which all look very, 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 very constructive and good to me. And I do like the reads here, um, especially from a momentum also to perspective, as we do see that two-day stokes will cross back up to the upside and more importantly, defend against getting out of the bullish control zone, which is what you expect during strong trending moves. You expect it to stay up there while the two-day RSI looks constructive here as well. It's not even in the bullish control zone just yet, and it is regaining the exponential on it. So this looks like a very nice, healthy read. Anyways, I completely got sidestepped from what I wanted to focus on on this, which was the weekly RSI for CMEs. And once again, we do see that the bounce continues off of the retest, off of the broken resistance for this falling wedge formation, which had been baking for about a year now, since since June 2019, almost a year, which puts a lot of efficacy on it and puts a lot of relevancy on it, at least in my opinion. And that being on CMEs does, uh, I think, hold a lot more weight. And with a formation like this, I usually don't care about wedges in, in, uh, in price action. They seem to fail all the fucking time. Uh, but I do see them work out quite well, especially in uh, cryptocurrency land or more importantly, just with Bitcoin um, when looking at, uh, you know, higher term time frames RSI. That I do like. And I really like that the exponential has gotten above the uh, the breakout trend line as well, because that now suggests that we will have support somewhere right around there. So it's adding efficacy onto that breakout. And again, this is a derivative of price action. So it, it will naturally tell you about a move before price action will. And in this case right here, things are looking very constructive. Again, putting in a higher low on the weekly, just need to see it take out. Realistically, this this week's high right here, the 18th of May, which would be uh, 10,035 on CME. So I will put an alert there right now. Why not? Some, somewhere right around there. It doesn't need to be exact um and that likely gets you know gets it pretty damn well as well and i'd imagine that all these things more or less happen at the same time if it is going to happen um uh meaning meaning that move that next move to the upside so here's the thing you know going back down to the lower term time frames i really am <laughs> it's 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 a really tight range here which makes me very skeptical to kind of jump in all willy-nilly myself i do not have a position right now i'm either happy to buy basically back above like 90 or 10,000, or i'm happy to buy somewhere down around here but in this region right here you know bitcoin can spend some time uh can uh, in, in sideways it's constructive yes but uh but that's not really the best use of, uh, of opportunity costs in the way that I think about it as a trader. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to wait right here. The setup is there, a little bit more patience, probably necessary, but the, with the way that the monthly set down, uh, things are looking well, in my opinion, more or less good. Um, on top of that, I do want to look at the 12 hour. We didn't really go over this one just yet. Now, this is the one big thing that also does make me kind of uh, shift my eyes in the downside as well. We do see 12 hour Stokes getting very tired at the top, uh, at the tippy tippy top, some might say. 
Um, however, what's going to be needed to make sure that the momentum for the 12 hour still remains the upside. The next closure needs to close above 95, 39 and a half, which technically speaking, it's about 10 bucks above right now. So it's definitely going to be closing above. No, just kidding. Terrible thing to say. Bad to have any sense of a humor when you're speaking to a general audience, but that's why I don't speak to a general audience. I speak to the cryptocurrency degenerate motherfuckers who enjoy trading, or maybe I speak to the traders more specifically, actually. But <laughs> anyways, uh, for all the, for all the, for all the dirty fucks who are still here well you're my kind of people and uh and i'm happy that uh, that we can have a community of like-minded individuals like that because well you know real it's good i think it takes like a special sort of uh personality in order to live like a trading lifestyle i guess i i don't think that most people would would really enjoy it um, but for those of you who enjoy it i salute you i salute you fully my friends i salute you fully so yeah you know 95 50 ish basically will remain that uh will will basically pull all the medium and short-term time frame momentums to the upside as we spoke about earlier so that would likely align for for another test of 9800 does bitcoin then close above 9800 or is it another rejection i would rather not call something like that right now and just let price action do its thing without my sort of interpretation on it because it doesn't need to be i want to be very clear with this you don't need my opinion on price action and if you've noticed i probably really or at least i'm like trying to not really give my opinion on price action and more so go over the relevant levels and whatnot because that is what trading really is. Uh, looking at the daily right here, we do see that daily historic volatility percentile is incredibly interesting. It is uh, back down into the teens. I want to see it get into the single digits. That's where it typically does set up for, for some pretty amazing moves. Last time that we got down to single digits was back on over uh, September, where Bitcoin set up for a pretty nasty move from about 10,000 down to 6,000, 7,000 region. And uh, time after that was somewhere right around here before this $3,000 pump from 7,000 to 10,000 and very similar results from the past, you know, right on over here when it gets down into single digits after about three months of uh, consolidation, boom, major move up. I mean, basically a, <laughs> basically like a three or four X from 4,000 to 14,000, pretty damn impressive. And, uh, and so, yeah, you know, I do think that we're working our way down there, but it would still suggest maybe, a, you know, maybe a little bit, few more days, something like that before this really becomes like oh shit this is an outlier of of um of you know of of a period of time um anyways looking at uh daily rsi mm, can go both ways on that one i don't really have any anything to be made out of that daily stokes still still working their way upwards and onwards we do have this lovely trend line coming in right here right at the edge of the bullish control zone however um However, it does look good. And of course, momentum to the upside will, or sorry, uh, the daily momentum will remain to the upside as long as Bitcoin's closing daily is above 90.50. So seems pretty out of the way right now and uh, and does line up rather well. A uh, little bit concerning with the daily jewel, but mm, I would still, it's, it, if it is going to play out as a signal, probably doesn't happen until like somewhere over here, which is about in a week as well. So it's either, it's, it's going to be forced into a decision. Either plays out a nasty daily jewel sell signal. That'd probably be good enough to get us back down to like 86 or 8700 at the very least. Um, or or it completely overshoots it, and uh, and it should be really, 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 really clear um, in the next few days. The light blue having such an aggressive slope right now suggests that it probably doesn't play like that. You don't really see those signals play that much, and you kind of just see them shoot right on through. So before everyone gets crazy with that, relax. It's all good. Focus on the tangible, and we still got you know days to go before that becomes like a legitimate thing. Anyways, uh, looking at the looking at the biweekly, which I which sorry did not close yesterday. Night. It was a triple weekly that closed yesterday night as well. Uh, pretty damn good here as well. Um, bouncing off the off the test of the ten simple and the twenty one, which are actually having a bullish cross themselves. And momentum here looking good, still carrying out still still carrying itself onwards and upwards to the upside, as well as uh, triple weekly RSI looks actually very similar to uh, to the monthly and. And mm, looks like a continuation signal here as well. Although if that was on a lower term time frame, I probably wouldn't give two fucks about it on a triple weekly like this. That's close enough to a monthly and it does look okay. It does look good. Um, okay, cool. What else do we have to look at? Uh, maybe the two day. Um, two day is interesting as well. Two day momentum will actually move back up to the upside. Funnily enough, if Bitcoin can just close this next two day dildo, which I believe closes uh, tomorrow night at... Um, at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time, um, as long as it closed above 93.50, looking good there as well. And uh, three day is three day is closing tonight, I believe. Yeah, it is closing tonight, and momentum actually remains to the downside as long as we're below 97.50. So I could say that if Bitcoin does fail to uh, to move past that next big barrier to the upside, 
uh, probably in this next daily total closure, we probably will start to test some downsides of this range, but that wouldn't necessarily make me bearish, just looking for the downside to be kind of filled out a little bit. And, um, and, and, and I'd more or less look at it as, uh, as an opportunity very, very likely, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, I still wanna see it in real time. That's what matters most, I suppose. Um, so with that said, let's go check out probabilities as they are running over here, working today, which is really cool. And what do we see on the daily? Uh, let me just make sure that this is right first. Okay, current, yes. Um, so on the next daily total closure, which is which is about in 18 hours and 14 minutes and 21 seconds, there is a 21 and a quarter percent probability to close above that 9,800-ish level to the upside. The 9,300 level to the downside, which again is not relevant for the higher term time frame, it's only relevant for a short term move, probably 400, 500 bucks, tested downside of the range after that in the upper 8,000s, um, does have a very high probability, however. 37 spot 73, very fucking high. Uh, 12 hour would show something I'd imagine relatively similar. 31 spot 34% to the downside and 13% to the upside. And uh, if we look at the four hour, just for shits and giggles, I'm curious what this one would show as well. Uh, actually equal almost and, and the above target probability a little bit higher as you see these rings start to shift back around to the upside. Let's put this on future and see if that is still um, the same. The same, And yeah, it is. So I do like that actually a lot as well. And I'm curious how the 12 hour and daily are operating. No, they're still squeezed into the downside. Yeah, still squeezing actually rather aggressively to the downside. So it is a little bit bifurcated here, which makes me really um, want to kind of step back from the short term analysis. But, uh, you know, we did say that yesterday was likely to come back down and, and fill around 9400 that did happen i don't really feel confident to say much more than that right now just because things are i feel like things are just going to rebuild themselves naturally here as uh we're really coming to the culmination of the precipice of this you know of of, of this major consolidation right here um now i didn't even really talk about the upside targets i've only talked about the downside targets i think um but uh, but above 9800 you know i do think that bitcoin will very likely test the prior high at around 10,500. The reason why that is relevant is because, well, if Bitcoin does take out that prior high, we will not only have a, an, an uptrend on the weekly confirmed by getting a higher high, we'll also have a change of behavior from a volume profile perspective. As you can see above this level right here, things are different and likely does get a free ride up to this higher value node right here. Relatively speaking, it's obviously not very high in the context of this uh, history right here, but in uh, relative to what we're looking at right now, it is certainly, um, or sorry, what, what surrounds it is, it is, it is of, of, of interest, although it wouldn't suggest that it's like a humongous area. However, the thing with this is, is that above 11, 11, five, that's where things really take another major turn for the macro, which, you know, generally, you know, above 11.5, I become generally just macro super bullish, uh, looking for 16,000, 20,000, probably even beyond. There's going to be ebbs and flows. There's, there's going to be nasty downs, probably 30, 40% downs in the ways that Bitcoin likes to play out. It's corrections <laughs> um but uh, but overall uh i wouldn't really have any real reason to be bearish um for any like long-term move unless if something like massively changed um but for right now you know looking at looking at this area right here it is of interest because this does operate as hey this does operate as um, still a symmetrical triangle, or even or even works as a, an ascending triangle, depending upon which way you kind of uh, plot it out. Um, if you are looking at it as a an ascending triangle or or symmetrical triangle, the measure moves more or less the same. It's actually pointed towards about eleven thousand bucks, which is interesting because that would imply a move above this last prior high right here as well, can, creating that uptrend on the weekly. So you know, putting putting two or two together, I'd say above ninety eight hundred, things look more or less very good. Um, and, and, and above 10, five, I, I, you know, I don't really see any real reason to stop at 11,000, probably short term, but realistically, I do think that Bitcoin would test that super macro area at 11, five. Personally speaking, I do think that it would break over time, maybe have an ebb and flow there as well. But overall, um, you know, the setup, the, the setup looks very constructive if that were to happen by the same token of the downside, uh, like I, said, I, I think I did cover the downside already, but below 8,600 or even 8,700 now, uh, if we destroy this higher low, yeah, 8,700, I would look for this to have a quick move down to 8,100, probably a small bounce there on the 200 simple, but I don't think that that would be the low. I think that we'd head down to about 7,500 and probably play out another bounce there, maybe an actual low there. And personally speaking, I do think that we would hit the 618 somewhere down around 6,900 ish region right here. Um, but again, I don't really think that's what's happening. I think that Bitcoin's going to spend some more time going sideways, fill out this range a little bit more, probably test the downside. Uh, I do think, I do actually think it's a little bit likely to test the downside again on this range. But overall, um, as long as these rising lows hold on the, uh, you know, on, on this trend line right here, 
I look at that as more or less an opportunity, especially with the way that the higher term timeframes like the weekly, monthly um, closed. And uh, oh, did we close a quarterly last night too? Hold on, hold on. Uh, no, but the quarterly looks is looking pretty damn good. Any sort of a move above 10,500, the quarterly looks incredible, actually. I'll just put it that way. All right, cool. So uh, why else would I think that this thing is more or less bullish? Well, looking at this, that looks good. NASDAQ, which has been leading the market and uh, more or less correlated with Bitcoin on the macro for the last 10 years, as we've shown a million fucking times, which I don't feel inclined to show right now. Um, looks like it had a pretty fucking good monthly close actually i think that this one's very likely to make new all-time highs into the month of june and july probably does have a short-term pullback down to like 9300 maybe even 9000 overall but just like bitcoin coming back down a little bit a look at that is an overall opportunity this thing is bullish and it's and it's not even bullish it's bullish af uh there's nothing bearish about this this is this is climbing the wall worry i know that it's going to be some sort of a rising wedge yes i do think that things can come back down to like 93 or even 9000 ish region but i'd look at that is very likely a major opportunity this is getting ready for some fomo action here is what it looks like uh anywhere above 97.50 on a daily closure and realistically um i think that we did plot out a measure move on this inverted head and shoulders which was pointed towards like 10,000 or something which is a nice even number as well looking at e-mini futures for uh for spy same sort of thing here as well maintaining a couple closures above the 200 simple um still looking at uh, 313 to 315 ish region right here where i would probably look for another short-term pullback weekly closed phenomenally monthly closed phenomenally i do think that this is getting ready for a retest of the prior high sometime this month or next month at 325 region and then probably beyond especially if nasdaq moves up as well uh gold also bullish <laughs> everything's bullish hey why 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 my rocks rallying with my fucking tax bunch of bullshit over here it's a conspiracy it's conspiracy to make you rich apparently all you have to do is just buy <laughs> It's like, <laughs> I'm trying to protect myself from the global financial crash by buying yellow rocks. Or you could buy NASDAQ. <laughs> or you could buy Microsoft or Apple because those are the ones that are really holding it up. Everything moves together. A rising tide lifts all ships. And however true is that in our current political situation, or maybe not political situation, but the social climate right now in America, it's like, it's like we're all on the same fucking team. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that most people, myself included, are rooting not for police brutality. At the same point, I'm pretty sure <laughs> most people, myself included, are also not rooting to like, you know, tear down everything and loot all stores who are more or less innocent or just probably not deserved of such actions. I mean, Jesus Christ, fucking Christ, man. Like, how do you justify that in any way, shape or form? Two, two wrongs make a right. No, someone needs to, the only way that the cycle stops is someone needs to be the bigger man. For fuck's sake. For fu I know it's easy to say when it's, when it's not, when it's not uh, your blood, but, um, but then again, it's easy to say when it's not your business either. Now, is it? Um, anyways, man, that's not what we should be talking about here. Let's talk about some magic in money or, or magical rocks that <laughs> probably going to be found in outer space at some point. So then what's the true value this going to be? Who knows? Well, still lo lo looking for a move to 1800 and beyond. This looks very good. Uh, could this one come back and fill down to like 1650-ish this month? Yeah, uh, but again, I look at that as an as an opportunity, most likely. Um, monthly still bullish. Higher term time frame still bullish. Um, but yeah, I like the setups there. Um, 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 let's go look at Mr. Beaterall. What's he doing? You bastard, you. Very good monthly closure. Same thing as Bitcoin. I wouldn't mind another backfill down to like 10, or it's 210, 215 region. But overall, I think 300. Um, looking good on the monthly. Uh, weekly is hitting resistances right now. So if it did want to pull back, uh, now would be a good time. Down to like 215-ish, like I said. Uh, but overall, I think that it's setting up here. I see no real reason to be bearish on this as long as it's above last week's low at 195, especially even as long as it's above like 205, looking pretty damn good for the uh, for the long term. Um, again, short term probably does have some, down, some, some downy action. Some Robert Downey action, if you want to call it that. Uh, I don't really have any real calls to be made on, on something like this. I don't, I don't even have any real calls to be made in general. Um, I'd be focused on the higher term timeframes right now. I mean, it's like if, if you've been waiting the last three years since 20,000 to get excited about Bitcoin again, what's, you know, what, what's a little bit more, uh, short term does look toppy though, to be fair. It, it does look toppy short term. Um, okay, cool. So let's, uh, let's wrap this bitch up then.
Why don't we? Short term for Bitcoin, or or it's not it's not the short term that, that I'd be watching. Ninety eight hundred to the upside, eighty seven hundred to to the downside. Uh, below ninety three hundred, I would look for another test at the very least to like nine thousand or, or eighty eight hundred ish region, somewhere down around here. Get that backfill, fulfill the monthly uh, open of last month, and uh, probably bounce from there. Like I said, I look at it as an opportunity. As long as we're above eighty seven hundred, it's just higher lows. Um, and uh, in short term, again, held by 9,300-ish region. So uh, so that also does mean that if Bitcoin can maintain maintain these next 12-hour closures above like 9,550, 9,600, I would look for another test to the top side of this resistance right here at 9,800. Doesn't imply a breakout, but it would obviously put the odds more in the favor of that. So for right now, a little bit of waiting, a little bit of watching, and I'll be very likely on Twitch later today. I want to wish you all well. I want to wish you the best, the best, and the happiest, the happiest, and I truly want to wish you a sincerely uh, happy June, especially with all that's going on man like you know it's very easy to get uh it's very easy to get depressed about what's going on especially in america right now like i i wake up and i watch all the videos myself and they get sent to me all fucking day and uh you know it's 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 somber and it's sad it's terrible and it's also it's also enlightening though too because you because i've also seen a lot of great videos where people are like actually trying to help each other out and you know peaceful protesting actually does get shit done rosa parks did it, it way back when i don't know when it was but probably in the 60s or 70s or some shit like that and and that actually changed, well, it changed the world in a lot of ways. And that was done completely peace, peacefully, complete, and completely, uh, and completely, you know, nonchalant. And you know, things take time, and, and and that sucks. But we're moving in the right direction, and that's you know, that's that's the icing on the cake. I really dislike the whole fucking fear mongering, especially by the by the media, and, and and how like everything's just going to shit. It's it's not. It's it's. I don't think that it is. I think that um, I, I think that for the most part, things are moving in the right direction, and. And, you know, and, and, you know, we'll have situations like this and, you know, the right response is to protest. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. But uh, but but the death and destruction, I mean, that's just, it's like fucking goddamn. Man. Oh, well, anyways, I'll get off my high horse right now and uh, leave you to it. Take care. And until next time.